Well, welcome, everybody, to another edition of Lewis at Large. Yours truly, Warner Lewis from the Flight Deck. And as always, that means some smart talk radio uh, is in your future. This segment, uh, we will be talking about the recent move by President Trump to officially recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and ordering uh, the State Department to move the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv. Our guest is John Quigley, a professor emeritus of international law at Ohio State University. He is also the author of numerous books, including The State of Palestine, International Law in the Middle East Conflict. And we're pleased to have him here. Uh, professor Quigley, how are you, my friend? I am well, thank you. Well, good. I uh, appreciate you being on with us today. This is a complicated subject with lots and lots of history. Share with our Lewis at Large listeners, if you would, a little bit about uh, Tel Aviv, what this move means to you, and, and why is it so important? Well, I think you're correct to focus on the history, because it's only there that, that you can really understand the significance of, of, of uh, the Trump uh, announcement. Um, when different countries began to establish uh, diplomatic relations with Israel in the early 1950s, uh, they put their embassies in Tel Aviv, which was at the time the main administrative center for the Israeli government. Um, uh, I mean, it, the Israeli government was not using Jerusalem as its administrative hub uh, because the the international community, as, as you know, one saw at the United Nations, was trying to come up with some solution for Jerusalem. Uh, the idea was that there would have been a separate status for Jerusalem, that it wouldn't have been part of a Palestine state, it wouldn't have been part of, of an Israel state. Um, uh, so there, there was uh, uh, the... The administrative apparatus of Israel functioning out of Tel Aviv instead. Uh, so the different countries that established relations with Israel put their embassies there. Um, and that's basically the way it's remained until the present time. The United States in Jerusalem has what's called the Consulate General, uh, which deals with with uh, uh, not with diplomatic matters, but with consular matters like issuing uh, visas. Uh, but uh, it is not considered to be part of the United States diplomatic uh, apparatus in Israel. It is completely separate. It reports directly to Washington. It doesn't report to the U.S. Embassy in Tel Aviv. Uh, and different the different countries that that have relations with Israel do the same thing. So this has been the accepted international practice now going back to the 1950s. Uh, so uh, you know the Trump announcement. The Trump announcement doesn't really change anything on the ground in in terms of sovereignty over Jerusalem. That is, the United States doesn't have control over that issue, um, but. Um, by indicating that the United States' opinion is that uh, uh, Jerusalem belongs to, uh, to Israel, uh, you know, that is uh, in indicating that the United States is going to be taking that position. And the United States, of course, has played a major role in trying to facilitate negotiations. Uh, uh, so that that's why it it's so important, um, but but the, the history as, as as you've suggested is really key to understanding this, uh, and as I say, it goes back to the late 1940s and 1950s when it was understood that if you put Jerusalem under Israel, that would would make it impossible to come to any kind of accommodation. Uh, with the Palestinians, uh, and and that really remains the view um, uh, at the present time. The the view at the present time is that this needs to be resolved by a negotiation, uh, so that uh, as a legal matter, the status of Jerusalem is regarded as being unresolved. That is, uh, it is not part of 
uh, of any state. And that applies not only to the eastern part of Jerusalem that was taken by Israel in 1967, but also to the western part of Jerusalem, which was taken by Israel in 1948. Well, uh, as, as you can imagine, this move, of course, uh, was a little bit of a fire starter move. Share with our Lewis at Large listeners, if you would, Professor Quigley, who is reacting to this positively, who is reacting negatively in the, in the international community, and why? The positive reaction comes from uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu of Israel uh, and by other Israeli political figures. Outside of Israel, there has been no positive reaction. Um, and in many circles, extreme negative reaction. Uh, the allies of the United States are, are uniform in criticizing. I mean, as I say, every, every government in the world that has expressed a view in the last 24 hours uh, has been critical of, of President Trump for, for doing this. Uh, we're putting a lot of adversaries uh, uh, into uh, situations where they're agreeing with each other. Iran and Saudi Arabia are united on 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 their criticism of of the uh, U.S. government on this. Uh, Russia and Western Europe uh, are united in in their criticism. Um, so we're 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 throwing a lot of adversaries uh, together uh, in in this. Um, so you know it's been overwhelming the the negative reaction. Uh, the French president has specifically come out criticizing uh, President Trump. What, uh, in terms of a, of a line in the sand, so to speak, as far as history, um, how will it, it, it's impossible, I suppose, to know, but pr project out and look back, how will history judge this? Is it a non event or is it something that is truly significant? Yeah, that's a very good question. And it's hard to judge because what President Trump has done um, is that he has issued a, a waiver. Uh, under the Jerusalem Embassy Act of 1995, a waiver in which he is declaring that it is in the national security interest of the United States that the embassy not be moved to Jerusalem. At the same time, he is saying that he is planning to move it eventually to Jerusalem. Um, so uh, that, that's a bit contradictory. It leaves it very unclear what he will actually do. Um, uh, he, he may not do anything. It, it appears that he's undertaking a project to look for a site that may take some time, and he's saying that there won't be any embassy built for a few years. He may well be out of office. Uh, before he, whatever plan he has comes to fruition. Um, so it, it may well be th that this winds up being a non-event in that sense. Um, it, it's not a non-event in, in, in political terms. That is, the fact that the United States has uh, put itself on Israel's side on this issue uh, is is likely to make it difficult for the United States to participate in any kind of negotiation process. That could be a negative. That could be a positive. The United States has not been particularly successful uh, in the last few years at, at bringing the parties together. And it may be that the European countries will take a, a stronger role in that regard, uh, or the parties will, will deal with matters on their own without an outside uh, element uh, like the United States. Uh, so it's, it's very hard to judge 
what impact it's going to have on the 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 the, the broader question of resolving the Arab Israeli conflict. If you just joined us, here's truly Warner Lewis from the flight deck of Lewis at Large Radio. And this segment got a good one going here with Professor John Quigley. He is Professor Emeritus of International Law at Ohio State University, uh, quite a prolific author on books about the Middle East, including the statehood of Palestine, international law in the Middle East conflict. Uh, Professor, uh, what about this? Again, as we look at this recent move by President uh, Trump to officially recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, was this a move that was predictable? And if it was, didn't hear much about it recently. And was it a surprise at all? Well, President Trump did raise this issue during the campaign. So to that extent, it's it's not a, a surprise. Uh, he gave a speech for, at the American-Israel Political Action uh, Committee during the uh, campaign. That's the main is pro-Israel lobby in the United States. And he was interested in, in getting their support in the election. Uh, so he made a speech to them in which he said that he was going to move the embassy to uh, Jerusalem. Um, uh, from what is known about the the White House on this, the uh, Secretary of Defense, the Secretary of State, uh, are both against what President Trump is doing. They think it is a mistake. Uh, so it's uh, uh, more his, his, you might call his political advisors, the ones who uh, who, who think this will help him politically, uh, who think that this was a, an appropriate move. What, in your opinion, uh, is, in, again, the long-lasting effect of this? Again, I know it's hard to predict the future, but, again, I sort of go back to what we were talking about earlier. Is it ultimately a non-event that people kind of get their feathers rattled right now and then they forget about it? Or is this something that will be sort of a, a thorn in, in an international relations side? Mm -hmm. Well, as I say, it, it doesn't change anything on the ground in an immediate sense. And, uh, you know, every country can have its view as to oh, uh, Jerusalem. I mean, if Burkina Faso decided that uh, Israel uh, uh, has sovereignty in Jerusalem, you know, that w would probably not be a, a, a huge event. Uh, the only reason it has significance is that the United States is a, an important uh, player in the situation. Um, but uh, it's it's being rejected very strongly by the rest of the world, which in a way supports the the, the Palestinian view of it. The fact that, that that nobody will go along with with what President uh, Trump uh, is is saying. I mean, the, the eastern part of the city was taken by Israel through aggression in 1967. The western part was taken by Israel. In 1948, in, in violation of, of what the the United Nations w was indicating should happen, um, and as a result of taking each side of the city in those two years, the Israeli government has forcibly moved people out. It has engaged in ethnic cleansing of both sides of Jerusalem. Um, so to, you know, say that Israel has sovereignty over it uh, is, in effect, to reward ethnic cleansing. The Middle East has been a subject that the United States has, has wrangled with and had angst over and wrung its hands and good periods, bad periods. From, from where you sit, Professor Quigley, what's the current state of, of U.S.-Israeli uh, relations, and, and are things getting better, are they getting worse, or are they kind of status quo? Well, uh, that that's an interesting issue. Uh, for a while during the presidential campaign, it looked as if Trump might be less supportive of Israel than prior presidents. Uh, that took a, a turn, I think, during the campaign, before the end of the campaign. Uh, for one thing, uh, Trump began getting substantial contributions from Sheldon Adelson, who is a, a, a very wealthy American uh, who is very supportive of Israel and was pushing Trump in the direction of, of being more pro-Israel. Uh, and since the election, uh, President Trump 
has been rather soft on Israel with regard to its building of illegal settlements in in the West Bank, including in East Jerusalem. Um, uh, so, it, in a way, you you have an administration now that seems to be more supportive of of Israel than before. Um, although some would say it's more supportive of of kind of what you might call an extremist uh, element in Israel, uh, that is the element that that supports the idea of taking over Palestinian territory and not giving much to to the Palestinians. Whether that's in the long term interest of Israel is is uh, an interesting question. I mean, it may well be negative for Israel in the long term that that Trump is taking uh, this this kind of position uh, because it it makes it more difficult to have an accommodation that could result in in long term security for Israel. Well, professors, we begin to wind down here. Uh, what do you see as the future of that that area? Again, are you hopeful? Uh, are you pessimistic? Uh, uh, what should we be thinking and watching for in the future uh, in the Middle East? Well, I think we should be watching for who comes into the picture to try to facilitate this uh, accommodation that needs to be made between Palestine and Israel. Uh, it would be helpful, I think, European countries can um, take up the slack, as it were, if the United States is bowing out uh, of the situation. I think the European countries have a better understanding of the history of the conflict um, uh, and are more likely to facilitate an acceptable solution that would involve some redress for the ethnic cleansing that Israel engaged in in 1948 uh, and would would lead to a, uh, an accommodation in regard to uh, Jerusalem and in regard to Israel's settlements. Well, we very much appreciate uh, your insights and your thoughts today. This is a complicated issue and uh, very much appreciate uh, some of the perspective you could give. How can people find out a little bit more about some of the work uh, uh, and the writings that you've done about the Middle East? Well, I, I think my books are uh, available through, uh, you know, Amazon and an Internet search, and they're, they're in libraries around the country as well. Again, that is Professor John Quigley. He is a professor emeritus of international law at Ohio State University. Thank you again so much, and we would love to have you back on again uh, to hear some more perspective. Thank you. You bet. We will be back with more right after this on Lewis. 